2,000 kilometers away from home, 28 days, 16 voyagers. My name is Clark. Welcome on board. For March 10th, I embarked on the microcampus journey. This is a program where a group of students have the opportunity to explore the village of Shizhou and study a topic of their high personal interest. My project is concentrated on the history and purpose of the Tea Horse Road, together with its interconnections with antiques and the tourism industry. I chose this topic in order to study ancient domestic trade and tourism. After solid research sessions, I concluded that to fully comprehend the significance of the Tea Horse Road, one might consider looking at the public understanding, the Sigley hypothesis, and my own perspective on the topic. The first understanding that I'll be discussing comes from the public, the one that most people know of the Tea Horse Road. In the past, the Han needed horses, especially trained war horses, in order to protect their northern frontier. The Tibetans, on the other hand, wanted tea, as they figured out tea can strengthen their bodies for long hours of labor. Their needs promoted the prosperous tea horse trade. This trade, beginning since Tang Dynasty, has left over many valuable artifacts, indicating physical and cultural exchange. Antique shops in Shizhou often have a collection of these. On one side, there are the vernacular kinds of antiques. This includes horse rings, horse bells, saddles, coins, teacups, utensils, and so on. The collection of these antiques demonstrate how traders will wish to maximize carrying capacity on the mules and not bring things for leisure or entertainment. There are also antiques that reflect the expansion of religions and ideas. If you go to any antique shop in Shizhou and ask for something indicating cultural exchange, antique dealers will show you the metallic miniatures of mosques. These date back to the late Song Dynasty to the early Min Dynasty, when Mongols appointed the Hui ethnic group to control and govern Ringnan. Their umbrella of control covered most of the tea horse trade, and through this, they expanded their religious influence. Although this public understanding covered most of the background information, it is only one perspective one side of the story. A diametrically different view was presented to me by Mr. Brian Linden, and it came as a complete surprise. One of his friends, Gary Sigley, published an article in 2010 explaining his results of investigation on the T-Horse Road. In the article, he discussed, with full insight, about his perspective on cultural relics and tourism. The Sigley hypothesis states that Deng Xiaoping's theory of Fajan Taishiyin Dali promoted the development in China, regardless of the loss of cultural heritage. This type of cultural heritage preservation is no different than the direct development in tourism, as most efforts in preservation across China is relevant to fast money and mass tourism. Sigley also expressed his concern in regard to the lack of original cultural traditions due to the local community's eagerness to win financial gains. They sacrificed their traditions, instead reshaping them and repackaging them for tourist preference. Unfortunately, the Sigley hypothesis may be true. The Tea Horse Road has been used as a label to entice tourists and consumers to explore the Ringnan region. The cultural exchange may be exaggerated for commercial purposes and the creation of an exotic experience. Tourism developers exploited this opportunity to use the seemingly different ethnic minority groups in China to, to promote domestic travel. Yet this promotes something completely different, the attitude of ignorance when it comes to history. After looking at both positions, I decided to make up my own mind. But before that, I want to talk about my own personal journey with the Tea Horse Road. As I began my field research in Shizhou, I realized that nobody knew fully about the history of the Tea Horse Road. People would know about the caravans, the tea and the horse, but hardly anything else. Even the antiques that I encountered were mostly repetitive. Only by the second half of the trip, I was introduced to Gary Sigley and his theory. More and more, I began to understand how my struggles in gathering information was somehow reasonable. One of the biggest problems I faced during my research was the blind associations. Both tea and horses were common in the past, so it is unfair to assume that all antique teacups in Shizhou came from the Tea Horse Road, and that all saddles excavated in Ringnan were from the Tea Horse trade. 
the exaggeration of the concept is forceful and biased. Local contacts also gave me an impression of the T-Horse Road being culturally insignificant. Mr. Yang stated that the Dali Kingdom originally believed in Buddhism and that the external influence was minimal. Lao Mao and Mr. Zhu both said that there was little Hui influence via the T-Horse Road. Mr. Brian Linden said that the T-Horse Road is now used as soft power and that the selling of this creates socio-cultural opportunities for tourism. And so, perhaps the T-Horse Road was never so significant culturally. Having looked at the public understanding, the Sigley hypothesis, and my own thoughts, have you made up your own mind? From my view, benefits belonging to the tourism industry and actual cultural preservation may and will coexist as an oxymoron as long as globalization continues, and those who wish to win fast money from distorting cultural images are the major culprits. Looking back at the beginning, I would have never expected to delve so deep into the T-Horse Road. I thought I would be merely looking at antiques and talking about history. Yet Mr. Brian Linden's special contributions completely turned it around. Throughout this inquiry project, there were definitely ups and downs. I want to thank everyone who supported me along the way. I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who made MicroCampus possible. MicroCampus has imprinted a mark on me, and it was a stunning one.